I'm Maggie. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, which is part of a series I'm calling Fashioning Favorites, wherein I analyze the looks of my favorite film and TV characters and recreate their costumes with an eye towards sustainability. If you also love fashion, film, and culture, I hope you'll subscribe. So, why the nanny? The nanny was more than a sitcom. Okay, it was um, a postmodern psychodrama about classism and ambition in the 1990s. You know, Fran Drescher's Fran Fine was an icon, honestly. I, I mean, a, a, a cultural touchstone. God, all her art is Fran Drescher. I never saw the nanny, but I don't want that to stop me from participating in this conversation. It shouldn't. In my first foray in this series, I was living in late 90s, early 2000s land with Buffy the Vampire Slayer and indulging in the kind of fashion sense I wish I had, that cool, collected, stoic kind of minimalism. But now I'm going back a touch to 93 to 99 and leaving the ultra hip hellmouth for something a little more my style. The bright, loud, graphic world of the nanny. Since HBO Max started streaming the series in April, I'm not the only one who's been curious about how kind time has been to the show. We're in the world of comedy, set in the musical theater backdrop of Broadway producer Maxwell Sheffield's mansion, and the storylines and fashion alike have an over-the-top, unabashed artifice to them. Fran Drescher, costumed by Emmy Award-winning Brenda Cooper, plays Fran Fine, who has since and rightfully become a fashion icon. The costumes here are a little more, well, costumey. They have pizzazz, they have whimsy, she had style, she had class, she was there, and they have what I find most important, polish. Mr. Sheffield may be able to produce plays on par with Andrew Lloyd Webber, but the Best Dressed Award goes to Fran even though some argue that Charles Shaughnessy's character was flashy in his own right, which may be true. But before we delve into the fashion, it's important that we look back at shows like this with an understanding of their problematic parts. Does the nanny suffer, for example, from the same fat phobia that plagued friends? abso freaking lutely just last month, Lauren Lane was in Vice talking about, quote, the ageist, sexist, sizist industry. And later I'll touch a little bit more on the tragedy of the C.C. Babcock character and other sins committed by the show. But it was kind of groundbreaking in its portrayal of Jewishness. In an article about how the Jewish jokes on friends have aged so poorly, Mira Fox praises the nanny for being more progressive. There she writes, neuroticism and a shopping addiction also define Fran Fine, the titular nanny, but they are framed as part of what makes her delightfully unique. Similarly, the take notes the ways in which the show both perpetuates and dispels the stereotype of the Jewish American princess. Meanwhile, in the 1990s comedy series The Nanny, Jewish protagonist Fran Fine teaches high society wasps how to humanize Jewish Americans. As a matter of fact, you're not like anyone else I've ever met, which is not altogether a bad thing. Fran ticks many boxes of the stereotypical Jap. She's loudmouthed, dressed to the nines, and eager to marry well to appease her overbearing mother. But Fran isn't as wealthy as the traditional Jap, and when she's compared to the Sheffield family, she's almost de classe. At least I'm not that broad over there. Would you look at her? <laughs> Desperate look in her eyes, boozing it up. Matt Baum argues that Fran Fine and Fran Drescher in particular similarly portray gayness with love and acceptance, in marked contrast to the role that gay characters played on Friends as punchlines. The character was bold and audacious and lived in a world where queer people were part of everyday life, at a time when most other sitcoms treated gay characters and stories as an awkward crisis or an opportunity for a very special episode. What was remarkable about The Nanny is how unremarkable queer characters were in the world that Drescher created. Part of what I also enjoy about the show is how it celebrates femininity. And if you watch Shakespeare's video essay about how Hollywood demonizes ultra-femininity, 
I think you'll see just how impressive this feat is. Perhaps my favorite reason for celebrating Fran Fine is that it's a way to celebrate Fran Drescher. She was the publicist for Spinal Tap in This Is Spinal Tap. She plays Alana's aunt on Broad City for heaven's sake. Pre-pandemic, she was reportedly working with Rachel Bloom on a Broadway musical adaptation of The Nanny. Does it Dan Levy of Schitt's Creek fame chose her for his sitcom Indebted. Look, everyone loves Fran. She handled her creative partner and ex-husband Peter Mark Jacobson coming out as gay with a plum. Sally handled it with a plum. That's a plum, Miss Fine. <laughs> No, it was a plum. Drescher has founded Cancer Schmancer. She's an outspoken advocate against ageism. And she's, according to The Cut, your new favorite anti-capitalist icon. <laughs> also in The Cut, Matthew Schneier writes, Drescher remains a foghorn of joy. Look, we all need some joy in this world. So without further ado, let's get into the looks. When I was Google image searching to find outfits to replicate, the candy wrapper dress seemed so obvious. It's very camp and yet so simple. So I picked up an LBD from Goodwill, which was half off of $5.99 and also a ton of candy that was a lot more expensive. I simply cut the wrappers and used a hot glue gun to attach them directly to the dress and learned the hard way that candy wrappers do not have stretch. I don't recommend using them as a fabric. So this dress turned out to be a full size smaller once it was adorned with all these labels, but that makes it the most Fran of all my outfits. I tend to not like tight things cutting off my circulation so much, but the nanny, on the other hand, has clothes that fit her like a second skin. I discovered that she walks in little baby steps, at least partly out of necessity, because those short, tight dresses are not the best for mobility, and it's a great thing Fran was hired well after Maggie, Brighton, and Gracie were toddlers who had to be chased around. If you're watching this video, you may also have seen Mina Lay's video about Fran Fine and know that costume designer Brenda Cooper used a black turtleneck and tights base for Fran's looks, which I would argue totally holds up as a uniform building block today. And this one is no different. My turtleneck could stand to be a bit tighter, but this is the one I had, so I'm using it because once again, we are in a climate crisis. Mine is originally from Reformation and I got it secondhand from Poshmark. My tights that I'll be wearing throughout this video are from Swedish Stockings, who make sustainably produced and super long lasting hosiery. This next look sticks to the turtleneck and mini skirt silhouette that is so classic Fran. This look is more of an inspired buy than a recreation, but there are some similar ensembles on the show. We already know from the theme song, for example, that she's the lady in red when everybody else is wearing tan, so I had to go for something red. And I had to have at least one mod look represented here. The nanny was a master of 90s does 60s. Her bouffant sometimes heads in that direction, no pun intended, and I wish I had done this flip hairstyle and or found a wide white headband, but I stuck to the more recognizable Fran hair instead. My red cashmere turtleneck is originally J. Crew, but I purchased it you guessed it, secondhand, and so many years ago that I no longer remember from whence it came, but it's safe to say it was either Poshmark, Depop, or Thread Up. This mini skirt from Rent the Runway should fit me a little more snugly, especially to get Fran Drescher's pinched in waist. You may know that Brenda Cooper even put shoulder pads in Fran's bathrobes to accentuate the nipped in waist silhouette. Even the cartoon in the opening theme has that Jetsons angular look. I don't want to dwell on this too much though because those beauty standards are toxic and we don't need to be reminded of how long we've been taunted by tiny waists. 
Not to mention the specific horrors of the heroin chic aesthetic specific to the 90s and early 2000s that has traumatized many a millennial, myself included. And by the way, Anne Helen Peterson writes beautifully about this here. So worship Fran Drescher's frame if you must, but balance that out with some healthy questioning about why we might think a specific body shape to be more desirable than another in the first place. Speaking of beauty ideals, Fran was almost always elongating her legs with the black tights and black high heels combo, so in this one I bucked that in favor of leaning into the 60s vibes of this look by doing the mod white ankle booties with it. My white boots are originally Aldo and I got them secondhand from Poshmark. Say it with me. Regarding footwear, I should note that when she's not wearing her standard suede high heels, Fran wears black over the knee boots quite a lot on the nanny, so if you're trying to put together a costume, please consider adding those as an alternative. She does sometimes wear white boots though in that 60s style. Ah, oh, my grand finale is this Moschino dupe. Fran, despite her character being down on her luck at the start of the series and supposedly lower class, manages to work a lot of designers into her closet, especially Moschino. I love how Drescher talks about the designer's sense of humor being such a good fit for Fran, who is, after all, a comedic character. So because this fruit print dress is graphic, almost to the point of childishness, I thought my subpar arts and crafts skills might suffice. And in my opinion, they did, so long as you don't get too close. While Fran and Moschino are playful yet refined, my handiwork is a little rough around the edges, literally. <laughs> so I got the base dress after a lot of hunting online. Though there's no shortage of black and white polka dot sheaths out there, I wanted the size of the dots to be quite large, I wanted it to be second hand, and I wanted it to be affordable. So I applied some thrifting tips, see especially those by Lena Norms in her Deedpop tips video. I'll link it in the description box below. I got this one for 12 bucks on Poshmark. Hopefully at some point I will discuss gentrification and other problems with the secondhand market, but that's another video. Comment below if you want to see something like that from me. Okay, so back to DIYing the dress. I raided my best friend's felt stash to get sheets of all the colors I'd need. Yellow, green, red, black, white, and orange. I cut out the shapes, lemon, cherries, watermelon, and orange to the best of my ability. And here are the fruits of my labor. The fruits of my labor. Um, so these got hot glued onto the dress in a placement somewhat resembling the original and voila. Underneath, I'm departing from the turtleneck and doing a sheer top like the one Fran actually wore with this dress. Mine's originally Aritzia, but I got it secondhand on Poshmark. Mine's a little more like the actual Moschino dress than how Fran wears it because Cooper famously hiked up the hems of Fran's clothes and I decided not to chop this one off. Not to mention the fact that it's not quite my size, so it fits me more like a shift than a sheath. However, the fact that it's looser also means that it's super comfy and I'm a billion times more likely to wear it again as a result. You tell me, would you wear this crafty dress in public? And if so, where? Because I really want to wear it again, so I need to find a venue. Okay, so those three are all the looks I created this time, but if I'd had the opportunity, I would have created dozens more. There's a lot to choose from throughout six seasons worth of The Nanny. With that in mind, I'd like to go over some of the elements that I missed and share with you some of the purchases I would have made if money were no object. Vests. Fran rocked vests, like they were going out of style, which they did, but now they're coming back. <laughs> There are tons of vintage vests out there for you to scout out on your own, but I was particularly drawn to this bright plaid cropped one on Etsy. It's not a dupe for something Fran specifically wore, but I think she would have appreciated it. I will link this and the others in the description box. Animal print. 
This Moschino jeans leopard dress is so Fran I can't even. And truly my lookbook is incomplete without animal print. Neon and other 90s bright colors. In addition to graphic black and white looks and a fearless attachment to red we already talked about, Fran also wore a kaleidoscope of colors and patterns. You could recreate that with this two-tone dress from Etsy. Rainbows and sequins. I think a contemporary version of Nanny Fine might wear a lot of Alice and Olivia, so maybe some dresses like these rainbow sequin shifts would be perfect as an update to Fran's column dresses. And finally, real 90s vintage. If you want to find the actual vintage designer items Fran wore, it's become remarkably easy thanks to the Instagram account what Fran wore and also collecting the nanny. At the end of the day, what I think Fran's wardrobe teaches us is that fashion can be liberating. I really hope you enjoyed this video and will let me know in the comments which nanny look is your favorite. Some of my next costumes will be Lorraine Warren from the Conjuring movies and Emma Stone's Cruella. So if you want to see videos like that, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time for another adventure in fashioning favorites.